Thank you. Thank you very much. It's um, wonderful to be back here in Blackburn. And I am deeply honoured to have been asked to stand for Parliament again here in Blackburn and Darwin, to have been asked by Blackburn's independent candidates, councillors, to be asked by the Workers' Party of Great Britain. And we are going to give it one hell of a honour at getting elected here in Blackburn. I was there in the International Court of Justice in The Hague for the genocide case between South Africa and Israel. I was present in the courtroom. There were only 14 seats in the public gallery. I had to start queuing at 2 o'clock in the morning in minus 7 degrees centigrade in The Hague in February in order to get one of those 14 seats. At 4.30 a.m., still in minus 7 degrees centigrade, I was joined in a queue by my friend Jeremy Corbyn, who also queued in the early hours of the morning in the freezing cold. And Jeremy is even older than I am. Uh, so that was uh, a feat, a real feat. And we sat there and we listened to the South Africans on the first day outline the most compelling case. Now it's true. There is nobody in the entire world who does not know that genocide is happening in Gaza. It is as plain as your face. Everybody has seen the evidence. There are people who, for political reasons, seek to deny it, but that doesn't mean they don't know it's happening. Everybody knows it's happening. And the South African lawyers, or the lawyers on behalf of South Africa, outlined in detail after detail, the facts of the genocide. Over 750,000 homes destroyed. Over 10,000 children killed. More by now. The maimings. The deaths in pregnancy. The killings of doctors, of aid workers, of lawyers, of university professors. The incredible percentage of children killed in the conflict. Approximately 40% of all the people killed by Israel have been children. That's just not normal in war. War, of course, is not normal, but that's not normal in war. In almost every genuine war, genuine armed conflict, the death rate of children killed is between 8 and 10%. I cannot find, I, I cannot find any example of any conflict in recent history where 40% of those killed has been children. That is the plainest indication this is not a war, this is a genocide, a killing of a people. We listened to this, outlined brilliantly by the South African lawyers, and on the second day we listened to the Israeli lawyers. And it was astonishing to be there. They lied and they lied and they lied. Let me tell you some of the things they said. They said the reason that so many children were killed was that Hamas employs child soldiers. They said that the reason that so many homes were destroyed where these were booby-trapped by Hamas or were misfires of Hamas rockets. They said that more aid trucks were now entering Gaza than the volume that used to enter before October the 7th. And they said that every single hospital in Gaza was a Hamas military base. And those lawyers stood there and said those things. And it occurred to me, everybody in that room, including the people saying those things, knew those things were not true. Everybody knew those are lies, including the lawyers making the lies, including the agents of the Israeli government sitting behind them. And they were telling lie after lie after lie, and the judges knew they were lies. The judges definitely knew they were lies. And they were telling the lies to justify the killing of children, to enable the killing of children to continue. 
And I sat there and I thought, I am in the presence of evil. That was the presence of evil. How anybody can do that, can try to continue a genocide, try to continue the killing of children, and try to justify it by standing before the highest court in the world and telling lie after lie. And that is why we are in a situation where there is no two-state solution. Israel is not a genuine political entity. Israel is a terrorist entity spreading evil in the world. And I say to you this, please nobody feel guilty for not voting for me last time, but you'd better vote for me this time because now you know, now you know about Gaza. Now you know that the Labour Party has not only opposed a ceasefire, the Labour Party still, to this day, is supporting British arms exports to Israel. All arms exports to Israel must be stopped. We are at a turning point. Yesterday, Keir Starmer announced that the Labour Party will increase defence spending to 2.5% of GDP. That's a 25% increase in defence spending. Yet they tell us there's no money for an incoming Labour government to improve hospitals or schools. They tell us we need more privatisation in the health service. They tell us that Austerity, Tory austerity, has to continue. The Labour Party has abandoned the people. It is time for the people to abandon the Labour Party. Thank you very much.